Trump and the drama on Yasso tonight. United States Secretary of State Rex Tillerson visits President Buhari in Abuja, cautions against taking loans from China. President Buhari pays condolence visit to Benue, expresses surprise at police chief's failure to relocate to the state after the spate of killings. INEC chairman supports the establishment of Electoral Offences Commission, says he checked violence and impunity as well as reduced cost of conducting polls. And a plane carrying 71 passengers and crew crashes at the Paul Airport, killing 49 people. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria's total intervention this year hits $1 billion as it injects $210 million into the forex market. On sports news, the Nigeria professional football league side, Power United, mutually agrees to part ways with its technical advisor, John Obu, following a series of poor results at the club. And from Abuja, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo advocates independent governance structure for Nigeria's Apex Bank to help enforce banking sector regulation. Tonight from Abuja, where the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has given the assurance that the United States will continue to support the federal government in its fight against insurgency. Mr. Tillerson, who met with President Buhari at the presidential villa as part of his Five Nation African tour, was hopeful that the Dapchi schoolgirls and other abductees will be released alive. The U.S. Secretary of State also cautioned Nigeria and other African nations against taking loans from China. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. Mr. Rex Tillerson was received by Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister, Geoffrey Oryama. Hello, Secretary. Most welcome. Then the meeting with President Buhari. The two men discuss issues of trade, security and leadership in the less than one hour that the meeting lasted. This much was revealed when Minister of Foreign Affairs and his American counterpart spoke at a press conference. Mr. Tillerson praised President Buhari's fight against corruption, then unveiled the United States economic plans for Nigeria, as well as alternative to Chinese loans. Later this year, we will inaugurate the U.S.-Nigeria Commercial and Investment Dialogue and a Trade and Investment Framework Council, both very positive steps to develop stronger business networks, and the President has, has charged uh, some of his uh, executive staff back home to begin to develop alternative financing mechanisms. The U.S. is clear about the continued support to Nigeria in fighting terrorism. A proof is the willingness to supply military-grade aircraft to Nigeria. In particular, as you know, the United States has agreed to sell to Nigeria the A-29, the Super Tocano uh, aircraft, which our aircraft and military believe will be a game-changer. Mr. Onyama debunked the insinuation of government's complacency in handling the kidnap of Dapchi girls. It would be... It's incorrect, actually, to say that it took a week uh, to acknowledge. Um, it was acknowledged immediately, and, um, and there was some auditing uh, that was being done and strategizing. Now, you know, other people might have made comments to the press, but uh, those comments did not represent uh, the government. What will the American government do to help rescue the Chibok and Dapchi girls, as well as other abductees? But the way we support is in providing them capability, capacity, whether it's equipment, uh, but also training uh, personnel for special operations, uh, and sharing certain intelligence to ensure that they have uh, all the information available to plan and carry out a recovery effort. Mr. Tillerson expressed hope that the rescue efforts will be done in such a way that the girls are returned alive and safe to their parents. The how and when the two gentlemen are keeping close to their chests. From the presidential villa in Abuja, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. Now let's get a bit of perspective on Mr. Tillerson's visit. And joining me is the managing director of financial derivatives company, Mr. Bismarck Rewane. Thanks a lot, Mr. Rewane, for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you, Jamal. 
Now, Mr. Tillerson is the highest ranking U.S. official in the Trump administration to visit Nigeria at this time. How significant is this visit, would you say? It is significant to the extent that uh, not a few, a few weeks ago, Mr. Trump was uh, supposedly made some comments which were not very complimentary about African countries and Haiti. So, at what, for one thing, it's uh, mending the fences. And uh, secondly, it's very important. The U.S. is Nigeria's most important trading partner. And therefore, this is important that, and it's very significant, and it's coming at this time. Uh, it's critical for Nigeria. Well, it's interesting that one of the things he has said or advised is for African nations not to take loans from China. Just looking at that whole um, discussion there, there's also a $533 million aid package for Africa coming from the U.S. So what's the American argument in all this? Well, there are two, two sides of the argument. One is that America is playing dog in the manger. You can't, you can't eat and you don't want other people to eat. So you cannot stop the Chinese from making loans. But the comments Tillerson actually made were that African countries must not forfeit their sovereignty for Chinese loans. Because when you look at those Chinese loans, uh, to a large extent, they're like a Trojan horse. They are gift wrapped in something which you don't know. Uh, so one has to be very careful because it was all right for Nigerians to be borrowing or Africans to be borrowing significantly. But now we're going to a situation where interest rates are going to start increasing again. The U.S. Fed is going to increase interest rates at least four times this, this year. And so we can easily be going into a, what they call a time bomb, a dead time bomb, and we have to be very careful. It's not the amount of borrowing, but what you use the proceeds for. And uh, you know that Nigeria in 2003 had to write off, had to pay $18 billion cash to take a, get a write off of $36 billion. We are debt to export ratio at that time had dropped all the way significantly to about 17%. We're using 17% of our exports to pay for uh, to pay for our debt service today. Is back up to 57 percent. That means that 57 cents in every dollar we, we earn today is being used to service external debt. We got to be careful. So what you're so saying is that, I, sorry, I'm just trying to get a word in there. What you're saying is that you're not against borrowing, but it's about who we borrow from and what we use it for. Is that it? Absolutely. What you use the process, if you use it for investment, if you use it for fixed asset acquisition, if you use it for projects, infrastructure, roads, rails, refineries, power stations, that will create jobs and increase productivity. But if you use it for consumption, like for swaps and all this type of uh, transactions, you go back to where you were before, where you took principal debt, you took payable debt, and you took uh, tradable debt. All of this put together came a debt, and that is why you see that slide that shows you that it's a debt, it's a, it's a grenade, a ticking time bomb about to blow up. All right, thank you so very much. The Managing Director of Financial Derivatives Company, Mr. Bismarck Rowani, for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And before the arrival of the United States' top diplomat, President Muhammadu Buhari said he's surprised that the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, flouted his order to locate to Benue until the killings in the state are over. The President expressed his feeling at a town hall meeting with Benue leaders and other stakeholders at the government house in Makudi after he was told that the IG spent less than 24 hours in the state. He, however, gave the assurance that he will not rest until the crisis in the state and other parts of the country have been resolved. The much-anticipated visit is finally here. President Muhammadu Buhari in Benue State to meet with the people eager for a solution to the problem of violence between herdsmen and farmers, which has plagued the state. Also here are the ministers of Agriculture, Information and Defense, the National Security Advisor and other top government officials. With the state set, the people here are not going to let this opportunity slip by without venting their feelings, mostly against the Inspector General of Police. This woman is saddened by the heavy presence of security personnel over the visit of the president. She rather wishes they were around when the violence was at its peak.
this ex-general, his grievance is over the swift action taken by the president in Zamfara State, where violence was reported. And like other speakers, he too had a word about the police chief. For Governor Samuel Lotom, the question on his mind is what will be done to regain villages lost to armed herdsmen. No one dare go back to these villages that have been displaced. These herdsmen have taken over these villages, they are occupying them, the food stock, the farm produce of our people have become feeds for their cattle. It is very, very painful. The president takes the podium and responds to all the queries. For him, it will not make him a good leader if he intentionally looks the other way in the face of the violence. There is no way I could deliberately overlook what is happening security-wise here and anywhere in Nigeria. So please try to convince your constituencies that uh, through the processes of law enforcement agents, the police, the SSS, and the military, I'm doing my best. President Buhari also touches on the subject of the Inspector General's absence in Benry, which he says is a violation of the order he gave. I know I dispatched him here, but I took the two senators I mentioned into confidence and explain to them. As the president departs, the hope of the people is that all the promises made here will be translated into actions that will bring peace to their land. And staying with security matters, the Nigerian army says some of its men have been injured after running into an IED in Kagarua near Borono State on Sunday morning. The theatre commander of Operation Lafayette Dole, Major General Rogers Nicholas, who confirmed the incident to our correspondent, says two of its men are currently being treated for injuries sustained. He says the explosion further demonstrates that the region is still laden with IEDs and landmines, which security operatives are working hard to clear. To the conduct of elections in the country and the president general of the Igbo social cultural group, Ohaneze Ndibo, John Wodo, has criticized the conduct of the continuous voter registration in the southeast region. According to him, the absence of INEC officials, registration materials in some polling booths, and the use of obsolete machines makes it impossible for eligible voters to get registered. He was speaking during a meeting with the INEC Residence Commissioner in Enugu State, who gave the assurance that the challenges are being addressed. I have had the opportunity to go around your registration areas, and I have the conclusion that the Southeast is shortchanged. I am of the conclusion that INEC has deliberately denied this area of registration materials in order to ensure that we are under-registered. My local government area had the presence of INEC in less than three pulling boots. In my world, INEC was present in only one pulling boot in my village. That ward has between 18 and 20 pulling boots, which are registration boots. Now, there was only one machine in my world. Our delivery of new machines, which we have distributed across the local governments. These are new machines, very high-speed machines, different from the old machines the one I saw. We are also recovering the old ones to make sure that we have more registration points. As it stands now, comparatively across the 36 states, Enugu, within the period of CVR, registers the highest number, more than any state in the world. In part two, after the break, health experts fine-tune strategies on how to handle outbreak of yellow fever and other infectious diseases. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.